Globally, every year, 300,000 women die during childbirth. That is a mother dying every two minutes of every day. In this day and age, it is unacceptable that a mother dies giving birth. The University of Birmingham is one of the leading organizations in UK that's doing research in women's health. Some of the most brilliant researchers in this field work here at the university. We also have really good interdisciplinary links with others who may not necessarily be obstetricians or gynecologists, but still work in women's health research. So for example, we have public health researchers doing women's health research. We have people from the law school who's working on women's rights research. Uh, we also have mathematicians who are working to develop models to predict complications in women's health. So it's a perfect space that we can work with researchers from multiple disciplines, all with a focus of improving women's health. If we are to reduce the global maternal mortality rates, we need to tackle the main killers of mothers. So this includes postpartum hemorrhage, as well as infection. And my colleague, Ari Kumarasamy, through his emotive trial has shown that emotive bundle can reduce severe complications in mothers by up to 60%. Emotive is an intervention. The E here stands for early detection of postpartum hemorrhage. So at the moment, we know that about 50% of postpartum hemorrhages are missed by healthcare providers, so the diagnosis is not made. That means the patients don't get the treatment that they need. So what we did was to improve the diagnosis by bringing in a drape, which is a plastic bag that has got calibrations on it. So you can see that there is this funnel part here. This is in fact a bag where the blood can go in. And you can see that there are calibrations here, and this tells you how much blood has collected into the, into the bag. And then the healthcare provider is able to see exactly how much blood has been lost. And if the blood loss is too much, then they are able to act promptly. So that is the E, which is the early detection of postpartum hemorrhage using the calibrated drape. The motive is the bundle of treatment. So M stands for uterine massage. So massaging the uterus can contract the uterus and reduce the amount of bleeding. O is oxytocic drugs, which is drugs that can contract the uterus, again, you know, minimizing the amount of bleeding. T is tranexamic acid, another drug that reduces the amount of bleeding. IV is intravenous fluid. And the last E of motive is the examination and escalation of the patient to the right setting of care. And we thought this bundle of care would result in a reduction in the number of women who would bleed excessively by about 25%, and we had hoped a 25% reduction would be a meaningful reduction. But really, absolutely unexpectedly, we found a 60% reduction in these outcomes, a reduction in the number of women who bled too much, a reduction in the number of women who needed blood transfusion, a reduction in the number of women who died from postpartum hemorrhage. So this was hailed as a breakthrough. And since then, the WHO, the World Health Organization, has made it a policy recommendation that emotive should be made available throughout the world. And many policymakers and funders are now engaged in trying to implement and scale up and sustain this intervention globally. So at the moment, we are focusing on making cesarean sections safe for every mother who's going to go through the procedure. It's one of the commonest surgical procedures that happen in pregnancy. It is life-saving. We, we know that it can save the life of both the mother as well as her baby. However, we also know that in low and middle income countries, cesarean section, a life-saving procedure, is actually the cause of death. The rates of death are hundredfold high if a woman is from sub-Saharan Africa undergoing a cesarean section compared to a mother in a high income country. So why is that? 
many reasons. One is the surgical safety of the procedure, so the lack of skilled professionals to do the surgery in a safe manner. The second one is ability to identify the complications early and manage them. Women continue to die from heavy bleeding and infection following cesarean section. Third one is the facilities like ability to give blood transfusion, ability to transfer early, the anesthetic facilities that are needed. So all of these need to be addressed to make cesarean section safe. We are working in two countries, India and Tanzania, with partners like WHO, UNICEF, as well as the local governments. And what we are doing in order to make cesarean section safe is we are training the healthcare professionals on the ground in how to do the procedure and fine tuning and identifying the lack of skills and providing the skill set and promoting vaginal births, including use of assisted vaginal births like vacuum or one twos and forceps. The second one is helping them make the appropriate decisions. So decision making is, is key. So uh, these are algorithms that we follow as clinicians and we also find that this is lacking in a standardized manner in these places and we are working on a program that makes sure cesarean sections are only done for the right reasons. And the last one is implementing certain measures that will help us to identify the complications early. So for example, we are using a cesarean section drip that we know can identify blood loss much earlier so that clinicians can start giving the drugs to prevent the bleeding. And so these are new measures that are currently not in practice, but we are implementing it. And once this is done and we've really fine-tuned it, the next aim is to scale it up both nationally as well as globally. And already we've got the state government in India asking us, can you not scale up very quickly? So there's a huge uh, need for this work to be implemented at scale and at pace. And that's what we are focusing on. So through the CSAFE program, we will be having an impact on 30,000 mothers who give birth and at least uh, 10,000 of them will be cesarean section. So once the program is finished, the impact of the program will be seen in millions of women across the world. The University of Birmingham has the largest clinical trials unit in women's health. We are very fortunate in that the university is set up in such a way that we are able to deliver on such important and impactful questions, making real impact out there in the world at the moment. My ultimate goal is to make sure that every woman benefits from the research, that health of women is prioritized across all spheres of research, irrespective of who she is, where she is, or what she is doing.